So boys, 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 welcome back. Everybody, thank you so much for all the love and support on all the episodes. It's been absolutely fucking hilarious. Also, thank you so much for all the love on the player guides that we've been putting out on the channel as well. Everybody seems to be enjoying those. But privacy, today's video, we play Liverpool in the FA Cup final. So then with regards to the formation, like I said, I was just going to tinker with things and see how things come along. I look... This is my first save in FM, so it's going to take me a wee bit to kind of get used to it. The one thing I did notice when we were playing attacking and the wide center backs playing and attacking and stuff, uh, we weren't, does, is it strange? We weren't attacking more, if that makes sense. All we were doing was throwing people forward at the wrong time, and it was kind of throwing off the balance of the team. Because I'm all about like team structure, plays a team, pushes a team, and kind of just sort of like help each other out. And I noticed when we were on attacking, there were just people were willy nilly and all over the pitch. And that's not what I want. Look, if, if you're into that, that's that's your thing. I mean, you be more expressive, run of people. I like to build like a structured unit and like a team that works together. That's why I don't think of overly being enjoying Marcus Rashford this season because of his shit teamwork and work rate. And like the rest of his stats are wild. 18 goals in 36 games. So a, a goal like every other game. Which isn't bad, Rasmus Hoysland. I mean, he was in there 29 goals and 43 in his first fucking season. And he's nowhere near as good as Marcus Rashford yet. Anthony, I've actually been playing a decent amount. He, he's had a few injuries here and there. But because of his teamwork and work rate, and the fact that he has some pretty good stats, enjoys the big games and he's consistent. I don't know about the consistent thing in real life with Anthony, but uh, we'll just we'll not worry about that right now. So this is pretty much what I'm, I might be thinking about playing. With regards to the team... Right, I'm just going to clear the entire selection. So, if this is what I wanted to play next year, Onana, I'm very, very happy with. Diamande, very, very happy with. Antonio Silva, I'm happy with. Casemiro, I'm not going to lie, I'm probably going to look the offload. Between injuries and getting sent off, he's an absolute fucking nightmare. Um, Mount, super, super happy with. And then Shaw, I'm kind of on the fence about. I think, he, think he's pretty decent, but this is, this is Shaw at his max. He's 28 years old. Not going to get any better than this, but it's nice to have him around because he can play centre back. He's consistent. You know what I mean? He's English at House of Registration. So I'm, I'm reasonably happy with him. If the opportunity ever comes along to get a really fucking solid wing back, I'm probably going to do it. Right. And then Garnacho, super happy with. I think with a wee bit of time, Garnacho is going to be absolutely deadly. And then Rasmus Hoisland. So then that leaves us with another striker. Look, Martial injured all the time. Not really consistent. Marcus Rashford. Attitude's not really overly there. Sancho, just if he doesn't play every single fucking game, all he does is complain. Hannibal, he's all right. Bruno Fernandes, once again, as you can see, he's suspended. He's now suspended for like four or five games because he's been sent off so fucking much. Danny van der Beek, okay. Anthony, I'm pretty happy with. I don't know if I would overly start him. Dan Gore, pretty happy with. His attitude's pretty good. Arco, really, really good as a backup. And then... Martinez, I think Martinez, I think Martinez would end up being a backup. If I'm being brutally honest, I think, look, this is him at, at pretty much at his peak. He's worth 81 to 88 million. I think he, he's reasonably, I think he's pretty good. If I'm, if I'm being honest, I'm probably being a wee bit harsh on Martinez. I, I think he's good enough to stay in the back line. I like, I really, really do. He, he plays that ball playing defender thing really well. The only thing that lets him down is probably his height. I know it doesn't affect him in real life, but in football manager, he's only five foot nine. And we do, we've leaked a lot of really, really silly headers because he's so short and his heading's okay. So he's one, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't want to remove him, but I think he'd be best staying there. Like I said, I'm being a wee bit harsh, but like I said, it's only because of his height. I think it's the only thing. I may end up just playing Martinez in here. If I'm being brutally honest, I could probably play Martinez in the middle of the park along with Mount. Good attitude, good work engine. He gets stuck in, good natural fitness. You know what I mean? It, it, he's everything there to be a good Segundo Volante. Like, good teamwork, good work rate, natural fitness, stamina, fucking crazy mental stats. Tackling's good, technique's good. I'm probably more than likely going to play Martinez in midfield next season. That This was my thought. Then this leads us to our other striker, which I don't know. Like I said, I may give Rashford another season or I may play Anthony just because of Anthony's attitude and the fact that he does get stuck in. He's got high teamwork, he's got work rate, he can dribble, no matter, he can be a fucking nuisance. I'm undecided on that. I don't know. Center back wise, I would like someone a wee bit taller, but kind of like how Martinez is. Like a clone a wee bit of Martinez, but a wee bit taller would be absolutely perfect. I have a couple people in mind. 
but it all depends on where or not we can sell him. Then this leads us to right back. Kobe Menu, absolutely fucking fantastic. And Kobe Menu is absolutely brilliant. As a wing back, probably not going to be your first choice, if I'm being brutally honest. I just, his crossing's not great. His vision's okay. You know what I mean? It's, apart from that, he's an attacking player, and I kind of want to keep Kobe as an attacking player. So I think I'm going to keep Kobe on the bench. He's going to play a lot of games. Kobe will be, him and Mount will interchange. You got to remember, we're playing like, 55 60 plus games a season so him and mount and martinez will interchange and i'm very very happy with that scott mctominay is one i don't know he's okay in this game he's one i'm on the fence about he's got 14 finishing if i'm being truthful i would more than likely maybe make him because i have rasmus hoisin as the target forward i would probably make him the backup to rasmus i don't know people are like you're not going to play him up top look this way right 14 finishing 6-4, physical stats, fantastic, he's consistent, he enjoys the big games, can play with both feet, his work rate's fucking fantastic, yeah, his vision and his passing are okay, but he's gonna be one of those ones, he's just there to hold the ball up, pass it off a little bit, I don't need him to be phenomenal, he's not gonna be our first choice, so he may be a backup for either in midfield or target forward, the rest of the team, Martial, I wanna get rid of, Sancho, I'm probably more likely gonna sell, Hannibal, I think his contract's out soon, Bruno, I don't know, like Bruno is so good, but just I don't know. He just gets he's only had like one or he's only had like two or three yellow cards a season, but it's always been in big games when I've needed him. I think I'm being a little bit harsh on Bruno. I don't know. <laughs> Cause he's 43 games, 13 goals, and 14 assists. I don't know. I just he's I just think him as captain is not a great idea. I don't think having Bruno as captain is a great idea. But I may keep him in the team still. Bruno is another one, like, you could even just do this. You could put him up there, and then you could change this target forward to, like, a deep land forward, and just have Bruno on one side and Hoysland and Granacho on the other, and this could be a very, very good system here, because they I want to get rid of Bruno? No. But I don't know what to do with him, because I just, I don't know, the team doesn't seem to flow well all the time when he's on, which is weird, because he's so fucking good. I don't understand that. The game is a mystery to me at the minute, but I think... Going in the next season, this I would be pretty happy with this. I would like another centre back and an, a, a proper complete wing back. The board has also given us fifty eight million for transfer budget for next season, so I think that's pretty good. That should be able to get us. I don't think we're gonna be able to get a centre back and a wing back at the same time. We would maybe need to offload some people. We have some people that are worth a lot of money. Martial probably worth about fifteen million. Sancho, you could probably get like. 30, 40, 50 million for Hannibal, get 10 million. Danny van der Beek, probably get 10 million. Casemiro could probably get decent money for him if um the, the Saudi League were interested in him and then it went away. And I think the Saudi League is also interested in Bruno Fernandes as well. So we'll just kind of see how that gets on. I don't know. I'm kind of in this spot where th I'm happy with the team, but it would just like a few more changes formation wise. But all in all, boys, that's pretty much everything. So today is a pretty big day. I'm going to play Kobe Manu in the middle of the park and Danny van der Beek out on the right. I want to see what Kobe Manu's like in the middle of the field. He could end up being really, really good for us. Obviously, if we can win this, it means we win the Caribou Cup and the FA Cup, which will be absolutely fantastic. We finished second in the league. Champions League, I would have liked to go, went a wee bit further in the Champions League. But no, I mean, Bayern, a very, very solid team. And look, I can't be mad at the boys. Is Virgil van Dijk injured already? It's only six seconds. He had to be injured before he started the fucking game, right? But yeah, I would like... And Salah's injured as well. Um, but yeah, I would have liked to go a wee bit further, but I have to respect the fucking fantastic opposition that Bayern Munich are. No, I mean, like, if we get put out by, like, Ajax or something, I would have been upset. But Bayern have a very, very good team. But with regards to, like, privacy, all the stuff, I like to do that at the end of the season. I like to just be as honest as I can with the team and just be like, right, who's good enough to play? I'm always thinking... Is this, can this team win the Champions League? Obviously, win the Champions League is very, very difficult. Like, it requires, one, a very, very good team, and two, sometimes also a wee bit of luck. Because sometimes when I've won the Champions League, I've got, like, a good run of, like, teams, and then got somebody good in the final, and then I was lucky enough to beat them in the final. Or if you get, like, Barcelona in the last 16, and then you get Real Madrid in, like, the quarterfinals, and then PSG in the semis, no, I mean, it's going to be a hard run for you. So, a wee bit of luck, and also a good team. Is Diaz injured as well? <laughs> hold on I think Diaz is, is half of their team hurt hopefully that plays into us and we can, we can give them a wee nudge and get them get them off the pitch 
But I always look at it that way. Is this team good enough to win the Champions League? Pretty obviously, it requires a lot of money. I do have a few people in mind that I would love to bring in. Pretty obviously, you all know my first choice centre back would be Scalvini. If I could have Scalvini, oh my fucking hell. Um, Dia, Scalvini, Diamande, and Silva as our backline. Fantastic. But Scalvini's like you're talking 100 mil. And like, I don't know if I want to spend 100 million on a centre back. But I'm also thinking if we want to win the Champions League, sometimes that's the kind of money you need to spend on some players. But I'd rather spend 100 million on a striker <laughs> than spend 100 million on a centre back. But defence is very, very important. <sighs> Please don't be offside. Come on. I also thought I would give Marcus Rashford a chance today. Did he count? Fucking did. I thought I would give him a chance. I'm, I'm being very harsh on Marcus Rashford. I just, I just think I would have liked him to score a few more goals, but we have been tinkering with the formation a lot this season. So I've been kind of playing him like as an inside forward, as like an advanced player, as like a poacher, you know what I mean? So I've, I have been moving it around. I'm probably going to give Marcus another season or so and just see how we get on. I do like Marcus Rashford in real life. Like I'm a big fan. I'm, I would like to see him do a lot better, Jeanette. I just think, like he is in this, I just think his work rate needs to fucking go up. Like, Ten Hag needs to get him to start trying a wee bit more because he just kind of lollygags back a bit. And like I said, Anthony, not a fantastic player, but he will work hard. And I think players respect that. I just, I think if Anthony just picks up the ball and just goes at teams, and like, even if he loses the ball, track back and get it, I think if he just tries to fucking go around people, people will like him a lot more because everybody loves a player that works hard. <sighs> We were playing so well, and then we give them, like, one chance. Granted, here, I don't know what Mount and Garnacho were doing. Like, Mount, Garnacho is a wee bit behind, so I can't really overly be mad at him. But, like, watch this whole segment, right? Watch Mount. Go across and put a fucking tackle in, and then also we didn't close Dominic down at all. Just, just a wee silly sloppy goal. But like I said, these things are going to happen. No, I mean, you're playing against fucking Diaz, Salah, Darwin, Nunes. No, I mean, like, it's, it's going to happen. And Dominic's, uh, Solops, is it Solops guy? Whatever way you pronounce his name. He's also fucking fantastic. A great buy for Liverpool. He's also still really young as well, isn't he? Only like 24 years old. Garnaccio, this, this is what I want from Garnaccio. See, sometimes you just got to talk shit about Mount. But joking aside, this is the things that Mount does. Mount shows up in the big games when I need him, where Bruno doesn't, which is weird because Bruno has all the technical ability in the world, but Mount most of the time is the one that turns up in the big games when I need him. I don't know what Mount's captaincy is, but I'm thinking about it. That's also a thing as well. If we take Bruno off the captaincy, I don't know who to make captain because Casemiro, I'm more than likely going to probably try and sell Casemiro if I'm being brutally honest. He's 32, he's still worth a decent amount of money, but he gets injured a lot, he gets suspended a lot, and I just kind of want to cash in and try and get a wee bit of money for him, and basically just bring either somebody in who has really, really good captaincy, but then is that a great idea as well, bringing somebody in straight away, bringing somebody in straight away, and then making them captain, it kind of messes up like the whole team. We are absolutely spanking these ins right now. Maybe all the shit, maybe that's what I need to do before every game. Just talk shit about Marcus Rashford, and then he just turns up. I, f I hope he gets a hat trick. I really, really do. Like I said, I'm, I may give Marcus another season. I think, I, th I think I'm being very harsh on him. <laughs> like I said, I've moved him around a lot this season, and I just don't think he's had time to be consistent. <sighs> I just, I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. But we're actually playing really, really good football at the minute, which is nice to fucking see. Hold on, Antonio Silva? Could we meet? Oh... It's going to be nice to see how good Kobe Mainu is as well. I just, like I said, Kobe Mainu's been playing lead wing back on the right hand side this season just because we didn't overly really have another choice. Like I said, Wambasaka wasn't great going forward. And Delo was very average. I, I still can't believe we got 49 million for Delo from Arsenal. <laughs> I think we actually pulled our pants down. Even though he's a decent player, I don't think he's worth 49 million. I think we did absolutely fantastic, which is nice because some that's one of the things that I, I dislike about Football Manager. Say you're a band to low, right? It's going to cost you 45 to 60 million, right? But usually if you're selling a player like that, you get like half the price. Like you really do. I think it's hard. Well, I find it difficult to get the full price for players that I want 
like I, I feel like you get your pants pulled down a wee bit in football manager whenever you're trying to sell a player but if you're trying to buy a player you get your pants pulled down once again so no matter what happens your pants are always down when it comes to transfers maybe that's just me maybe i just suck at transfers <laughs> to be honest i probably do i think i pay way too much for some players sometimes but then sometimes we find good wee bargains a couple of times we found we over the over our football manager in fm22 we found a couple of good wee bangers with regards to like regens and stuff grab that i didn't find them three quarters of them was found by the scouts but i set up the scouting system so i'm gonna take full credibility for it it was all me there's no way that just went in this is one thing i need to have a proper look at the corner systems in this game because this shit has happened to us so much and i don't know how to stop one koei menu's on him and he still manages to bang that into the bottom corner Diamande, I don't understand how he didn't kick that. He just let it go through his fucking legs. <sighs> We've been playing really, really well. I might actually have to bring Rasmus Hoysland off here because he's had a lot of games. He's had a lot of games and he's very fucking tired. I'm going to need to bring him off. Yeah, look how fucking tired he is. He has played a lot of games for us and he's done absolutely fantastic. Like I said, this is a good opportunity for us to test out how good Scott McTominay is as a target forward, but he seems scoring a hat trick. I bring him in, he's, bring him on, he scores a hat trick. People have been, bet you they've been laughing, but like there's no way Scott McTominay's going to be a good target forward. He won the ball back and we near scored straight away. Garnacho is one I'm very, very excited. I don't know how good Garnacho is in this FM, but I'm excited to try and find out and see how good he is. Come on, Garnacho. Hardly. Couldn't, bro. That's it, just dribble pass. Good. Give him, give him a few. What was that pass? That's one thing that Garnaccio is actually, he does in real life as well. I think he's still very young. Look, he's only 19 years old, right? But he picks up the ball and then he just puts his head down. I think they need to work on like his vision and his like his end game passing. Because look, he can go past people. He's enthusiastic. He's still young. He's good with both feet. I just, his end game passing just needs to come up a wee bit, but that'll come with time. You know what I mean? But he's very, very digital. He's one I'm very, very excited to see how well he does at Man United. Oh, here we go, boys. We counterattack. <laughs> Remember when I talked about that Marcus Rashford hat trick? This is perfect, dude. Maybe this is where I need to play Marcus Rashford. Rasmus Hoysland, look, I, I don't expect him to score an absolute shit ton of goals with us playing the way we're playing. If we play with this three up top of him as a target forward, he's there to do a very, very specific job, which is basically hold the ball up and be a fucking nuisance in the air. And that's exactly what I'm... So, perhaps, you know, I mean, if he, he plays like a 6.9 or something one game, I'm not going to worry about it too much because he's there to do the job that I want him to do. Is Shaw... <sighs> do I, do, I'm not going to... I, I know Shaw's a wee bit tired, but he's on a fucking 8.1. Kobe Maynard I may bring off... Uh, do we bring Dan Gore on? Let's bring Dan Gore on. Kobe's booked and he's tired and he's not playing great. Anybody else? Is Shaw... I don't know. Shaw's on an 8.5. I can't bring Shaw off. Even though he's a wee bit tired, he's fucking playing fantastic. Oi, Trent, I don't need you. Trent is one I would love. Like, I would love to have Trent Alexander at right back. Reese James would be another one I would love to get in at right back. But here's the thing as well, right? Reese James isn't fantastic at dribbling, but his crossing all is very good. His shot's good. He's English, but he's going to cost you an absolute fortune. I'm a big fan of Reese James in real life. Also, Trent, I think Trent in real life should just be put in the midfield. Like, I really do. I just, I don't think... Have you ever watched him when he plays in midfield? He plays fucking fantastic. Liverpool need to buy a really, really good right back and just push Trent in the midfield. If they had a midfield three of your wee guy, Stefan, uh, is it Bacicic or whatever way you pronounce his name? Him, I still think he's very, very young, very raw. I just, I don't think his body's ready yet. Fuck it, let's go, boys. Don't you, ref. I will send someone around to your house. I don't know what they're going to do when they get to your house, but I'll send them right. Fucking yes. Go. Garnacho actually scored a decent amount of headers. This is what I want our wing backs to be doing. This. Just crossing the ball into the box. And look, Scott McTominay holding off two players so Garnacho can have a header. This is what I want. This is how I want the team to play. Also, we're spanking Liverpool, and that's great. Hold on, hold on. There's the thing. What do you call this wee guy? Yeah, him. Stefan... Bajacic, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I apologise. Him, I think he's got a very, very bright future at Liverpool. I think he's very, very good. He's just, he's very young at the minute and his body's not like mature enough yet to like start all the time. But I think he's going to be very, very good. So if Liverpool had him, Trent, 
and Harvey Elliott. I'm a huge fan of Harvey Elliott too. I think he's a good player as well. Like, Liverpool could have a very, very good midfield. And then they've got fucking Salah, Diaz, Nunes. Didn't have a great first season. He's starting to come in tonight. He's still not scoring a ton of goals, but he's setting a lot of goals up. And his first touch, his first touch has got a little bit better. That was one thing there was a lot of memes about <laughs> Darwin Nunes. His first touch, it wasn't great. I'm not going to lie. Look, I'm not going to try and defend him. His first touch was fucking ass. Scott, I was just telling people how good you were. And then you go, Danny, that's what I want, Danny. See that commitment right there? He's on a yellow card end of the game. Doesn't even care if he gets sent off. FA Cup, boys. That's two cups in our first season. Granted, we got nowhere near winning the league. And the Caribou Cup, look, that Caribou Cup final. <laughs> that is the longest penalty shootout I have seen in my life. It took me so long to edit that video out because I had to, I always try and keep these in and around the sort of like 18 to like 22 minutes. I don't want to make them like 30, 40 minutes long because they take fucking ages to render out. But boys, Caribou Cup, FA Cup, we finished second in the league and we made it to the round of 16 in the Champions League. I would say all in all, a fucking fantastic season, boys. So everybody, honestly, thank you so, so much for all the love and support. Like I said, this is a brand new channel, but I just started this up. We've got like 16 subs. We're doing really, really well. I think the content's good enough to basically gain us a bunch of subs. So everybody that subbed and watches the videos and leave comments and stuff, thank you so, so much for all the love and support. But boys, I think that's a good spot to stop off for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to. And YouTube, we got two cups in our first season.